Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations at Shore Soivis. I'm going to talk about an alternative dipole design that I have come up with. It's, it's really basically a dipole antenna in every sense of the word, fed with coaxial cable. Very little difference from your conventional half-wave dipole fed at the center with 52-ohm coax. The only problem is that if you live in a small town or far away from any large retail outlet, you may have trouble getting low-loss 52-ohm coax, such as RG8 uh, or RG213. Uh, you may find that very difficult to find, but you will find television cable, and that has commonly has an impedance of 75 ohms as opposed to 52 ohms for the coaxial cable that you use normally with ham radio applications. But that's not necessarily a problem because uh, when you center feed a dipole antenna, which is straight, a half wavelength long, free of obstructions, with well insulated ends, as I'm showing here, one half wavelength overall, one quarter wavelength on each side. The formula for the total length, by the way, of such an antenna is roughly 468 divided by the frequency in megahertz and that's the length in feet. Uh, it may be a little longer, it may be a little shorter, but if it's free from obstructions and you use common number 12 um, or number 14 gauge stranded, not solid, but stranded copper wire uh, the reason that I recommend stranded wire is because it is less prone to stretching as time goes by, thereby detuning your dipole. You'll have to cut it to exactly the frequency that you want. Uh, for 40 meters, for example, you would have roughly 33 feet on each side of the dipole, or 66 feet overall, but it might be a little longer, a little shorter. For 80 meters, twice that length, and so on and so on. But rather than using the RG8 or RG213 low-loss coaxial cable with 52-ohm characteristic impedance uh, commonly used for ham radio applications, you can easily find, even at Walmart, I believe, and even at your hardware store, you can almost certainly find 75-ohm coaxial cable for television applications. That's the kind that, and for your internet connection, you may find that same cable. And that's got a pretty good uh, characteristic when it comes to low loss. The problem being its, or supposed problem being its characteristic impedance of 75 ohms. But that actually comes very close to the theoretical characteristic impedance of a center fed dipole antenna, free of obstructions and a half wavelength long of 73 ohms. So you get nearly a one-to-one, -one, if you use a one-to-one -one ballon coil, which I always recommend, a ballon at the center, uh, and you can purchase those. Um, sometimes you can find those at TV shops. If you have to, you can do without a ballon, but I would recommend in that case that you wind several turns of this coaxial cable around your hand and make a tight little coil, say 20 turns or so. They call that a choke ballon and put that right here at the feed point and then run your coax down to your radio. That can be any length and you'll have nearly a flat one-to-one -one standing wave ratio on this cable. An, an almost perfect match. When it gets to your radio you're going to find that there is a mismatch of approximately 75 to 50 or roughly 1.5 
to 1 SWR. But that's not a problem for most high frequency or VHF, HF, VHF ham radio sets these days. You don't need a transmatch or any other special tuning device. It'll usually accept uh, that level of standing wave ratio. But the important thing here is, uh, and it's mainly a theoretical concern because the loss difference is negligible between 50 ohm and 75 ohm coax of the same size, uh, in same diameter and same uh, perfectly matched loss per unit length. Uh, the main difference is that the standing wave ratio mismatch will occur at the radio right down here so there's no length of coax for that uh, mismatch to exist along and thereby increase the heating and the loss in that coax even though that increase in heating and loss is likely to be negligible. The most important characteristic of a coaxial cable that uh, has a standing wave ratio of 2 to 1 or less is that it be low loss, well made, weatherproof coaxial cable to start out with. That you get the best quality stuff you can lay your hands on. And oftentimes you will find that that is your TV cable or your internet type. 75 ohm coaxial cable so commonly available. I put these uh, uh, extra, these outside the insulators, I made these blue to suggest that you use non conducting materials such as uh, nylon rope or something to uh, for this span to your support rather than wire. It reduces the chances of any stray end effect coupling between these support links of wire and your antenna. Uh, so you should, your, you will have the same degree of mismatch 1.5 to 1 approximately as you would have if you used 52 ohm coax but there won't be any mismatch along the cable. It will simply exist right at the radio and so in theory this is really a, a superior arrangement uh, to using 52 ohm coax provided that you keep your antenna clear of obstructions preferably horizontal preferably above level ground and that you run the cable away from the, the dipole antenna for a 90 degree at a 90 degree angle for at least one quarter of a wavelength and preferably as 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 long as you can get it you don't want to run this stuff off at an angle you know like this or like that uh, you want to run it straight at a right angle away from the antenna which should be straight and should be horizontal the ground under it ideally should not be sloped but rather be level and so everything should be nice and symmetrical and theoretically ideal and if you can accomplish that you will come up with a pretty nearly ideal dipole antenna on the cheap and if you really want you can use zip cord the common cord used for uh, appliances such as uh, frying pans and things like that 12 gauge stranded zip cord cut it to a quarter wavelength at the at the uh, frequency that you want then unzip it because it's stranded it won't stretch because it's insulated that that really doesn't make much of a difference um, it may help to weatherproof your antenna a little but it's best with your insulators to make sure that you strip the ends of that uh, wire and when you wrap it around that you solder the wrap arounds so that these things aren't going to slip off your insulators and with the nylon rope well uh, ask your hardware store your, your handy dandy 150 IQ hardware store specialist and I happen to know one here in Deadwood, South Dakota, who's a real bright guy, and he'd be able to tell me and tell you exactly how to tie that nylon rope to the insulator to keep it from slipping off. Until, of course, 
it weathers to the point where it breaks or a severe storm comes along and you make the mistake of using trees as your supports. Uh, you know, you can't expect an antenna like this to last forever, but if it doesn't, if it falls down, you just put it up again. I mean, we are ham radio operators, aren't we? Uh, we're used to putting up antennas, aren't we? Uh, we're used to climbing trees, aren't we? Uh, even when we get old, isn't that right? Uh, it's just as you get older, the ground gets harder and the fall seems to be of a longer... I'm getting kind of facetious right now. Don't risk your life to put up an antenna for crying out loud, but, but this is about as simple and as cheap and as theoretically perfect an antenna as you can have in order to just get on the air and operate. And really, in the long run, that's what you want to do, isn't it? And of course you want to connect it or cut it for the CW portion of the band, don't you? Uh, Stangibalisco, whiskey one good vibrations, saying 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long, which, in my native fist, always translates to da-da-da-da-da-da. -da 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 -da.